Alrighty. Well, time to replace the shaft seal on this motor. And I just found something I kind of wanted to point out real quick because I thought it was a little funny because it's kind of quirky. When who, whoever up at the cockshut plant put this uh, steering motor mount together, apparently the uh, this bow here for the tilt positions was I don't know if they machined it wrong or they cut it cut it off of the uh, it was the end of a piece of flat stock or whatever the situation may have been, but the end of it wouldn't cut straight. So whoever put her, whoever made this weldman up, actually took the time to grind out a shim to weld to the side of the plate to make sure or to get the this horseshoe to lay flat on there. I just noticed that and thought it was kind of funny. You can, I mean, you could even see they, you can still see the hacksaw marks in it where they cut it. <laughs> That's just yeah, one of them quirky things you. See, working on this old equipment and stuff. Back when everything wasn't put together with a damn robot. Guys actually had to think on their feet a little bit. Why he didn't just go get a different one, of, or get a different uh, bracket, I don't know. But, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Must have been bored on a Friday afternoon or something. But anyway, I was... Uh, reading the instructions for this thing and it turns out I don't actually have to pull the motor out of the bracket or take it apart it says right very first thing follow the follow the instructions do not disassemble the hydro guide unit good deal makes life easy do not loosen the steering wheel with a hammer well I did that although I didn't, I didn't hit it hard Plus, there's no way to use a puller on that steering wheel without hurting it. Remove the shield. Remove felt washer. So. Remove felt washer. Which we have to save and reuse, but let's we'll wash it out with solvent. And then, pretty obviously, remove snap ring. So, I'm going to find something to set you guys up on here real quick. Okay, we'll try that. Life would be a lot easier if I could put that thing in its case, because then I could move it around. Because right now it's got it setting on a damn 4x4, four four, tilted at an angle. But the problem is, the case I got for it's the waterproof one, so when you put it in the case and try to... Uh, Use it to record sound. It um, sounds like you're underwater. I guess if I'm going to keep using that thing for videos, I'm going to have to get the uh, regular case for it. Oh, daggummit, you're not going to fit. I think these ones will fit in there. They will fit in there. Uh -huh. What the hell is that? Piece of felt. They really didn't give you a whole lot of room to work that snap ring out of there. Even with these baby pliers, it's... Okay. Remove seal package parts by one of the uh, uh, plug three of the four ports and pressurize the other. They plug which three of the four or just three of the four. So. It said I just plug three of the four ports, so apparently it does not matter which three. So we'll plug uh, 
probably yeah okay I got a plug so I guess we're gonna see how this works Come huh. on. That's interesting. Yeah, there's that. And there's that. Actually, there's those. And there's that. Huh. That might have been part of the reason it was leaking. I think there's a piece missing. Unless this is some sort of update. This is clean and lint free rag. Well, we don't have a lint free rag, so paper towels are going to have to be a trick. It's pretty clean in there anyway. That's the one nice thing because all these, all the combines, although some of them, there's not really any conversion. You just drain out the ATF and put in a hydraulic oil, but we still run ATF and all the combines just because that's what the book says to do. ATF is actually a better hydraulic oil than hydraulic oil because it takes heat better. It's got more or got better detergent packages in it. And um, because of that, anything you work on that's had ATF in it for the hydraulic system, the inside of it's squeaky freaking clean. And the motor feels good and tight. Not really any slop in the shaft, so of course it's a combine, so it ain't like it's got a shit ton of hours on it either. Uh, actually, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if they replaced the felt with this lip seal. Or the slip seal was missing and the felt's supposed to go. Hey, hell, I don't know. I guess let's read what the instructions have to say. Okay, uh. Cover was selling, we're not gonna do that, we're just gonna grease it. So, we wanna put this in and we're gonna put some grease on there. It's a tapered shaft anyway, and the hole's been chamfered, so there's nothing on there that's going to tear the seal up anyway. So, grease that. Grease this. I want that in there lip down, because the pressure's coming outward. New spacer with small end first, which will be this bad boy. It's actually more like a bushing. Push the new spacer down, so we'll need... Oh. 
think I got it. And we'll just give her a couple love taps, just to be on the safe side. Notice rubber hammer, just don't want to hit it. So hard will hurt anything. So apparently, they don't use these shims anymore because it doesn't say anything about putting them back in. Yeah, that doesn't say anything about putting that back in, so apparently that's an updated type of spacer. Because it must be taller, because even if even if they did want to put them old, the old spacer, these old, one of them's plastic and one of them's copper, or brass, one of the, probably looks brass. Even if they wanted to put them things in, they ain't going to fit, because the spacer's right up at the groove. that be sure faced the rounded edges huh I'll be damned the rounded edges and naturally I put it in the wrong way Good thing that they sent these instructions because I don't got a service manual for this machine, so I'd have been SOL. Assemble new seal. Yeah, so they replaced this felt with an actual lip seal, which is probably a good idea. Now we need I need to get them out. And we're home. Yeah, that's did it. Well, shit, that was pretty painless. Now, the weird thing about this steering motor is it's got a split here it's got a split here and it's got a split here there's no o-rings in any of those you look in the parts book there's no seal of any kind in here so i don't know there's not even any crush washers or anything so i don't know how the hell they're sealing that but they are it's kind of weird but anyway, go ahead and get this put back in the machine, and I had I got the parts to put new bearing in that uh, unload auger. So, since this is basically just the opposite of what you saw in the last video, I am just going to go ahead and get it put back in there, and then I'll come back to take video of putting that bearing in. So, we'll see you Alrighty, guys. Alrighty, I got the, that steering motor back on, and surprisingly, the hydraulic system bled out really fast on that thing. So. 
going on that bad. For now, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, bearing put back in the auger. And I got, there's a felt like that thing, a bearing, and a washer. This is a thrust washer. The washer's in good shape. Sometimes they're shot, sometimes they're not. But I got two felts and two bearings. The 525 and the grain cart use the same ones. So, um, just got one to have, I have around as a spare. Whenever we put these things back together, I always grease the shit out of them. In case they ever do have to come back apart, they won't be rusted together. When you grease them, I put the bearing in there straight the first time, which I didn't do. If you grease them, everything just slides right together, nice and easy, no muss, no fuss. If they'd done that at the factory, working on these things later later in life would have been a whole lot easier. But you can't have everything. So. Grab this and all this. That's all. Yeah, that's the old bearing. And this is the dust shield off of it. It wasn't, well, it was pretty much locked up. It didn't go out, out because the race is all still together. But another couple dumps and she'd have been shot. Another thing just kind of hung right in there till the end. Didn't let me down. So we're gonna grab all this. We're gonna grab you guys. We're gonna go down here. And we're gonna find a place to set you. Unfortunately, this thing had to sit out in the rain. So it's leaking a little bit, but I think we're gonna go like, and you're gonna get a top down, well, top bottom, bottom up view of what's going on here. Actually, we'll, of course it doesn't really matter which way you're oriented, but we'll go like that. It's gonna look goofy no matter how, because you're looking at it. Oh, I think you'd call it, consider that upside down, how the, what the heck you'd call this. So, grease that. Slide that up on there like so. Now the hard part, hopefully that doesn't fall. Need to grease the wrong part of the shaft for what I want to do. Need to grease that part of the shaft. Now slide that up there like so and hope it doesn't fall off. Interesting part is this. Got to pick the auger up, try to get the nut and the bolt and everything all lined up at the same time. That wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. That. That water is really freaking annoying. This is why I want to shop. I need a shop, I need a shed. I need a four wheel driver, a front wheel assist tractor. I need a lot of things. Well, I don't need anything. I want a lot of things. 
lots of wants. Not enough money to, to get them yet. Next big purchase needs to be a house. I've graduated college. It's time to get out of here and get my own place. There's actually a house I'm kind of interested in that's for sale, but I'd like to have a little bit more money saved up before I go off buying one. Cause it's got there's five acres. I'd say about three. Somewhere between three and three and a half of it's tillable. There's a decent barn. It's a little single story. Well, actually it's like a story and a half ranch. It would be a really nice little house to have. It's in good shape, but like I say, need more money saved up first. Okay, now I need a ratchet. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier. Huh. Those are seven sixteenths. Hold on a second. I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about uh, how ATF is better hydraulic, actually better hydraulic oil than hydraulic oil. But the reason we don't use it for hydraulic oil is because it's expensive as hell. And hydraulic oil, especially in the off-road industry where you're changing implements like on farm tractors or changing tools on loaders and skid steers and excavators and whatnot there's a lot of contamination which is why you need to change your hydraulic oil every so many hours and it's a lot more often than you change have to change the fluid in your transmission so it doesn't have to hurt buying it every once in a while for your transmission but when you're changing it every thousand or so hours in a piece of farm equipment or a piece of construction equipment if you had to buy buy ATF every time you'd probably cry okay there's that now woodruff key in there that's plenty of lubrication That's the biggest thing you gotta lubricate when you're putting stuff back together like this is the key. Because a lot of times when something gets hung up on a shaft like this, it's not hung up on the shaft, it's hung up on that key. And then slide the pulley back up on there. Oop, damn it. Whoops. 
that is the one downside over lubrication though is it doesn't hold nearly as good when you're trying to reassemble it. Didn't move the key, did I? Nope, we're good. But it also means it comes apart that much easier next time you have to work on it. And these bearings because of what they're doing do tend to uh, go out a little bit more often than a regular bearing mainly because all the shit that can get to it although I'll probably never wear it out again a little bit that there's a few acres I run through this machine at the moment hey, look, I got a better idea Stupid like a fox. Square drive socket. Sorry, I have to keep walking away and not turn the camera off, but there'll be a lot of damn jump cuts if I turn it off every time I have to go back and get a tool. about this belt is it doesn't have to get ungodly tight because right now the top of that auger is unsupported but when you unfold the auger it becomes supported and it straightens the auger out and cocks that pulley and tightens the belt up too so we're going to try it right there and if it slips a little bit we'll just have to Tighten her up some more, but on a pulley that big, I doubt it's gonna slip. So, there's that done. And I think with that, I'm probably gonna go ahead and call it a day, otherwise, I won't have time to get this video uploaded or get it edited, and it'll upload tonight while I'm sleeping because our internet is slow as hell. But, Anyway, come on, stay standing up, there you go. Ten bucks is well over on me. Hey, it's still standing. Anyway, 
with all the major stuff done last thing I really got to do to it is go through and check all the elevator chains and all the drive chains for tension and grease it and blow the damn cab out because it's full of cobwebs blow some of the others or actually blow the whole thing off because it's all that's the one thing I hate about washing combines you never actually get them clean they'll be perfectly still be squeaky clean can't find an ounce of dust or dirt or chaff or anything left on them when I'm done washing them here by the time I get them back over to the barn that rattling going down the road even though I blow it off with a with a leaf blower a big leaf blower we our big backpack leaf blowers so but moving some air blow it off then power wash it then blow it off again before I head out or before I leave by the time it gets over to the barn and all that rattling going down the road it's covered in chaff again there's more nooks and crannies on these things you can shake a stick at and you never get them clean actually may go ahead and do a quick wash before before I take it over just to uh, get all the oil and everything off from working on the hydraulics and stuff so we will have to see what time allows and what weather allows because it's supposed to start raining again it rained it's rained the last two days but anyway I guess that does it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one